thank you and uh, welcome everyone. I know th that this is the last session, so maybe you are a bit tired, but I think this can be good for you. Uh, I'd like to know, there are any of you that would like to code with me now? Or you'd like to only watch? Yes, let's try. So, are you prepared a collaborative pad to share the, the code with you? Like I can copy and paste and you can do the same, okay? And our goal here is uh, like when we talk about to, to do cross-chain communication, here we are uh, using an NFT. So my goal is to mint an NFT from one chain to another chain. So I'm starting on Avalanche Fuji, we are, we are on testnet, but the NFT will appear on Sepolia, on Ethereum, in the other side of the world. So let's do it. So this is me. Uh, you can call me Sol. My name is Sol Gigueiros. I am developer advocated at Chainlink Labs. So I teach developers how to use the Chainlink products. And let's talk a bit about CCIP. What is the Chainlink Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol? So when we talk about CCIP, uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, is this a bridge? This is more than a bridge. Can I use a CCAP like a bridge? Yes, I can, but uh, because I can do token transfers, but also I can transfer, I can transfer messages, and a message can be a uh, "Hello, Avalanche Housing Istanbul," but a message can be uh, like a command, like to call a function in another contract in the other chain. And we are using this because you are using the mint function in the other chain. But I'm calling the mint function from AVAX, from Fuji. And imagine that if I can do something like this, I can have the program token transfers because I can define my rules to transfer a token or to do anything that I like to do. And this is our goal. So some use cases for you, some ideas. Imagine that you can have cross-chain collateral, like maintain your collateral in one chain, but you'd like to invest in another chain to do a loan or to, to do whatever using the collateral in another chain. Or uh, we know that sometimes it's uh, expensive to do some computation, or even if it's not expensive, sometimes uh, the computation didn't fit the blockchain because it's so complex. So you can do in another blockchain or in another place and bring the result to your blockchain. In the same way, you can get some out, some optimization uh, on this. And I hope that you, uh, in the future, show me some new kind of applications that you build using CCIP. So this is our goal today, uh, mint an NFT from another chain. Uh, so my friend, please go to this place. If you'd like to take a picture, and then you can type later. And if you'd like to code with me, is this. Because this is a collaborative pad that you can uh, really uh, write over there with me. You can delete everything, so be careful. Don't be a bad guy with your friend. And I'm going forward. Okay. So this is the pad. If you are here, please put your name, your city, and country, like I am Sol from São Paulo, Brazil. So I came so far away to be here, and it's a pleasure to be here. And let's do it. To talk a bit more, a bit more uh, related to CCAP, this is the cross-chain stack. So we are uh, on this level, this layer, but when we talk about CCAP, we have a lot of kind of applications, but also what's so important, we have a, a special risk management network that ensure that when you do a, a transaction in the destination chain, you are sure that the transaction in the source chain, you cannot come back, cannot be reordered, uh, and like we have in the other talk before myself, 
uh, we are talking about, about the finality of the blockchain that it's in Avalanche Fuji. It's so amazing, so fast. I love this. So, to be, uh, because I have less time than normal, uh, for you that would like to do the NFT with me, I will share the code, but in a fast way. Uh, so, this is the point that we need to have now related to the requirements. And welcome to everyone. We have. A... Oh, I will go to India in December to eat in India. See you over there. And also all the people. So this is about CCAP. Uh, I already have a Fusion MetaMask. Probably if you are a developer, you have as well. If you need to get tokens on Avax Fuji, you can go here, but directly in the Chainlink faucet, you can get both. Okay, you must connect your wallet and get the tokens. So all the step by step is here for you. And I, I did a workshop like this yesterday. So I will add also some references for you that you can uh, re read later. And let's go. So our destination blockchain, it's a polya. So I will start at the end. I will start in the destination blockchain. And uh, I will have an NFT over there. So I will copy and paste the NFT for you. And if you'd like to use my NFT, I will not deploy it again. You can use mine as well. This is my NFT. So I will put this here. And uh, here we are. This is my NFT. I already have two NFTs in this collection that I did yesterday. And now my goal is to have one more or oh, maybe more if you'd like to do only the av avalanche part with me. Uh, we can add more NFTs here, but all the NFTs you come from Fuji. This is the goal, okay? Uh, so I already created this NFT on Sepolia. Also, I must have a, a destination minter. This is a content that you receive the transaction from Fuji. So I will copy this part for you. And this link, it's important. Like if I come here, you can see the supported networks. Uh, so if you are, we are on Fuji, where is he? Uh, Mainnet Fuji, here we are. You must have, you must know the router in the chain that we are interacting. And also we have the chain selector that we are using in the destination chain. So let's understand this a bit better. This is the high level architecture. Here we are. So I am in the destination part. Remember that I told you that I'm starting in the end. So here I have one NFT and I have a destination uh, minter. This is a, a smart contract that you call the mint function in my NFT. I will have this here. This is my DAP, okay? So, the router, you send the message to my destination meter. After this, oh, before that, we have that part done. Then we are creating this part. This is the source meter. So, with this part, we are interacting with the other side, and both of them, we are interacting with the routers. So, I create a counter here, where I define the router, send a message, the message will be what? The mint command, and the destination chain, that will be Sepolia, okay? And the router, you manage this for me using the risk management network as well. Let's come back here. So I already put like the, for you, the destination minter as well, but you can be faster. If you'd like to use my destination minter, you can. So you don't need to do nothing on Sepolia now. And you can do with me only the part in Avalanche, in Fuji. Okay? So let's do the Avalanche Fuji part together. Uh, let's see. So I must go to the Fuji, on, and I'm using MetaMask. And you can do this with me. And I will explain each of these contracts, okay? 
If you'd like to go with me now, do this copy and paste this content in your MetaMask. And I will do this part live with you. Let's understand all the contents before that. So first of all, we have an NFT. This is a basic NFT that I create using the, the wizard from Open Zeppelin. And I have four images, so I have a list of four images uh, starting on index zero. And you saw that the index zero and the one was minted, not the others. Uh, when I have like five items, I come back to the first, and it's this. I can have another. I did this for the Dev Connect, like he, the Chainlink day yesterday, so we are using the same. This is our NFT now. And it's this, I only get the index from zero until three. And this is the NFT, so easy. Then, remember that on Sepolia, I have a destination minter. To, have, to use this, I, my contract must import the CCAP receiver to be prepared to receive my message. And I'm importing the client because the client has the structure of a message that I need to receive. And I'm importing the NFT. Maybe I could create an interface with only the mint function, but in my case, I decided to import the NFT. So here is the router on Sepolia. So the router you send the transaction to my contract. And I must have this function in my receiver. Okay? I must have the underscore CCAP receive. And here you can see the most important part. So I'm getting the address of my NFT and calling what I have in the message the information that I have in the message. What will be the information? The mint comment, okay? Is this. It's only this, I created this test only to be sure that is working. And now let's do together the search minter part. Here is the search mint that you can deploy with me now on Fuji. And also I have the interface to the router I have the client as well, because here I'm creating the message. And when I do, how about fees? How can I pay this? I can pay fees using the native token, so I can pay fees using Fuji. Or I can pay um, the fees in the other chain using the link token, or in the future, other tokens. In my case, I decided to pay using the link token, and I had to code some values here to be faster. And this is the Cersei Minter. You can see that I'm handling some errors. And uh, in the constructor, when I'm deploying this contract, I must say which is the contract in the other chain that is receiving this message. This is the address of the destination, uh, the destination contract. So use mine now to be faster. And also, I'm paying fees in link. I have the link address here on Fuji, I'm approving. And remember that I must have the destination chain. This is a code, we are using Sepolia, that I got here, like this is for Avalanche. So we are, the destination is Sepolia, so here we are. Here I have the chain selector to Sepolia, okay? And I create this function mint on Sepolia. Here I'm creating my message, okay? What I have here, the address of my destination minter, the address of my contract on Sepolia. I'm calling the function mint to some address. What is the address? The address who is sending this transaction, the message.sender, this will receive the NFT. I could uh, also transfer tokens. You, can, you have some tokens managed by Chainlink that you can transfer. And in the future, we are implementing more tokens. On Testnet, we have a Testnet token to do this. And uh, talking about token transfers a bit, we have two approaches. Imagine that when we transfer a token to another chain, you can burn in the first chain to see the token in the destination chain. Or you can lock the token in the first chain 
the source chain to unlocking the destination chain. So we have this kind of tokens to you test later, but I'm not using ERC20 tokens now on NFTs. So the only extra point that I did, I increased the gas limit to be sure that I will not have problems. And remember, I'm paying this using the link token. So another point important here, the router, you calculate the fee on Sepolia for me. So is here, I'm saying the destination chain, my message, and the router, you calculate the fee for me. After this, I'm checking if I have enough link to do this, and I'm using the CCIP send to really send the message to the other chain. It's just, if I have more link in my account and then I'd like to withdraw it later if I'm not using, I can do this, I can check my balance, and it's done. Let's deploy it now. So, here we are. I am, I hope that I am connected. To be sure, I prefer to refresh this connect again, because sometimes I lost my connection, it was here since yesterday, I don't know. Here we are, let's get my content again. So now I need only the source minter. Here we are. Let's go to deploy and run transactions, connect, use the environment to connect with my chain and you can see that I'm authorizing again so I was not connected. And here we are, we have the source minter. If you'd like to do with me, use my destination minter that is here in some place. Here my destination minter. And let's see if I am on Fuji. No, I am on Sepolia. Let's go to Fuji. Yes, I am on Fuji now. Here, it changed as well, I am on Fuji. So good luck, let's deploy this. It's here. So I'm deploying a smart contract on Fuji that you send the mint con command to Sepolia. It seems that I have it. So to be sure, I will add here for you if you'd like to test mine. Uh, probably you cannot test, I'm not sure if I did some, uh, you can create yours using my destination chain, but I'm not sure to send it, like if you try to send your transaction to my contract, probably it's not working. You must create yours now. Okay, I have my contract. Next step, Remember that I'm paying fees using link. So I add the link to my contract. Get the address, go to MetaMask, tokens. I have some link here, send. This is my contract. Let's send five links to pay the fees. I hope this is enough. So when this is done, I will check my balance of my content. So let's go here, link balance. I, I already have it. You can see here, five links. So everything is done to click Mint or Sepolia. Good luck, let's go. Here we are. I'm sending the transaction now. And if you'd like to check my transaction, because we are seeing this transaction now in the CCIP Explorer. So copy the transaction ID, this is mine, and let's go to the CCIP Explorer. Add my transaction here. And now you can see that I have only the source transaction hash it's not on Sepolia yet, and the search was finalized, and we must wait a bit more. I can talk with you in this time, I don't, I have more things to explain to you. So this is how the process. Uh, this is so interesting because uh, like one chain didn't communicate with another chain directly, we must have the off-chain part. The off-chain part is the decentralized Oracle network. 
but exactly because of security. We have more than one layer of this. You can see like in the search chain that we did now, I sent in my case only information, not tokens, but I could send tokens. And if I have a token managed by Chainlink, I could have the token pull here to lock or burn the token. Then we are going to the off-chain part. And you can see that we have at least three networks here, three sets of nodes that are take care of this. One is committing the information. The other is really executing the transaction, sending the transaction. But all of this is secured by the risk management network that they must vote that this transaction is really done, really good, to be sent to the other chain. And this is the difference, including when we talk about bridges, this is the extra layer of security that we have it. Then, okay, we are in the other chain. If it's a token, maybe here we have the unlock part or the mint. Uh, it depends on how you are using our token. In our case, you don't have the token. We have only the router sending the information to the receiver. The receiver is my contract on Sepolia that's minted, probably now minted, the NFT. Let's see if I have more. Uh, why I must wait? Like you saw that I'm waiting like between, from Avalanche to Sepolia between two and four minutes. And why I need to wait? Because of the finality. And this on Sepolia is fast. If I start uh, on, on Avalanche Fuji, it's fast. If I start on Sepolia, the workshop finished and they're still waiting. So let's start on Fuji. So is this, let's see. My transaction now, success. And you can see that I have a transaction in the destination blockchain from Fuji to Sepolia. Uh, three minutes. It, this was how much I spent to do this. This is all the information that I have it. And Let's see the NFT now. Where is my NFT? Here. I will refresh the NFT. And yes, I have this orc now here, this ugly guy. <laughs> and you can see that he was deployed like one minute ago. Some details. Yes, three minutes ago. So is this? It's working. So this is what I'd like to demonstrate with you. I know that I was a bit fast. I have here some examples, some details part, but let's go to, this is the detail, how the risk management work is working, but I'd like to, to share this with you. So if you'd like to do this later, this is the presentation, and you already have all the code in the collaborative pad, so I know that I was a bit fast, but uh, I think you can get this and do by yourself. And also I'd like to invite you to our hackathon. We have an online hackathon that just started and uh, you end on uh, December. So you have four weeks to create an amazing project. And uh, do you have any questions? All good? Yeah, what? It's not oh, thank you. You have a question. Great. Uh, in what uh, scenarios will the risk management network step in? And uh, uh, can you can you give me an example scenario where the risk management network would intervene? Uh, yes. In fact, the risk management, the scenarios that the risk management interview. Uh, in fact, it's all timey because they, you can see over there the risk management, like the, uh, that part, the right to. The risk management approve the transaction in the first moment, like, and also approving the other moment. So it's reading the transaction and approving it in both chains. So it's all timey, we have the approval of the risk management. 
like it's a consensus, a, a, a consensus in this DON, this decentralized Oracle network as well. And we have like these uh, operators, these nodes in both chains. Do you have any more questions? It's good for you? And for you, wait. Uh, you can see this, uh, this is in the presentation, so I add some, uh, some links here, exactly related to what can help you, this, five levels cross-chain security, okay? And I think we are good now, we are, uh, like hearing the music and we are preparing to go to the happy hour. So thank you everyone. <laughs>